Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, the NBA regular season is upon us, and Magic Johnson is on set to talk all of the biggest storylines. Plus, Shannon offers up a blockbuster trade scenario for the Cavaliers. And was the hit that broke Aaron Rodgers' collarbone a dirty play? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. We're joined now by one of the greatest basketball players Woo. of all time <laughs> and the president of basketball operation for the Lakers, Magic Johnson. Welcome to Undisputed. Joe, I've been waiting to be on the show. Mm. You know, Skip. We've been waiting you know, for Shannon, you. Shannon, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. In all my years of covering sports, the man I have gained the most respect for as a player, as an executive, as a businessman, as a leader, and just as a man, is this man, oh, Irvin Magic you. Johnson, and we appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you, and I, mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't wait, Shannon. You know, <laughs> I was like, okay, let me come on right before the basketball season. Yeah. <laughs> well, th thanks for coming on, Magic. You're the only guy that made, made it look fun. Everybody else like, oh, man, but you were smiling the whole way through. Winning championships, win, lose, or draw, you had that smile. You just, <laughs> you were perfect for L.A. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and I Rare. think it's almost like Lonzo Ball is perfect for yeah. L.A. and the Lakers yep. and what we're trying to build. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's just great. And, and please, you know, this has been so much fun. And I know Nicole Murphy, too. Oh! Get your whistle! Get your whistle! Get your whistle! I made the money. That's all I need. You know, I've been, I've, been, I've been watching the show. Well, I'm in the money now. I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say that. You good now. Well, you are perfectly endeared now. There you go. I got He's you. He's got one for I got you. you. I got you. You don't have to worry about We're it. We're very happy to have you here. And your Lakers <laughs> open the season on Thursday against the Clippers. How much of a shot do you give your Lakers of making the playoffs this year? Well, I think, you know, everything has to go right for us, right? And everybody has to play, to have their best season. Okay. And I think that we have the talent, mm -hmm. but the West is difficult. It's tough, you know. Um... I think that Brooke Lopez has to play like he's been playing, who I really love. He can spread the court for us. Uh, Lonzo has to, you know, have an awesome rookie season. Not, I'm not talking about scoring-wise, just making sure he gets everybody involved. Mm -hmm. um, and then guys like Brandon Ingram has to have career year. Uh, KCP has to have a career year. So we, we're asking a lot of the guys to step up to make the playoff. But if we don't, that's not to say we didn't have a good season. And so I'm judging it by, did everybody get better? Right. And did we compete on a nightly basis? That's really important for us. If we do that, I'm going to be very happy. So I became a big believer in Lonzo Ball when he was at UCLA, ahead of the draft. Now you've seen him just for this preseason, but I know how sold you are on his long-term future. So give us some idea of ultimately how close he can come to having Magic Johnson impact on the Lakers. I, I think, uh, Skip, that um, he's right on track. And I tell you what I was really blown away. He's got the teammates right here because he's a good dude off the court. Okay. He is. See, that's see that, that was really important. Shannon, you know I was watching that, right? <laughs> yes. I, okay, what's the locker room going to be like? Can he bring the guys into him? He's done a marvelous job. Skip, you, you would like this guy, right? Doesn't think much of himself. Mm -hmm. he, he clowns around. Right. He's in there rapping. He's dancing in, the, in, 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 in uh, practice. I said, okay, we picked the right guy. And we have to remember something. He was the most efficient college basketball player last season. He's had one of the best uh, seasons in terms of being efficient in the last, I think it was seven, eight years. Even the high draft picks before him didn't have a better college season than him. I'm talking about being efficient. So we're, we're right on track. He's right on track. Now what we need him to do is just stay healthy. You know, because he got hurt in summer league with an ankle. He got hurt again. Right. Uh, exhibition with an ankle. So we need him to stay healthy. Right. Because he's going to make the engine go. He's going to make the team go. H how gifted a passer do you see him being since you were as gifted as there ever was? On the same level with mm. myself, Jason Kidd. He can see it before it even happens. He, he, man, and he throws you that pass that you can just catch it and shoot it. 
You know, a lot of times it's not high. Sometimes it's low on guys. They throw it side to the side. He throws it right in your wheelhouse where you can just catch it and shoot it. And he can create a shot for a guy. See, that's different from a lot of guys in the league today. Okay. Only probably LeBron. It's only a few guys that can create a shot for somebody. He knows how to do that. He has that skill set. And how much have you been on him to occasionally create his own shot? Yes, well, I think that's coming, you know. <laughs> that's a great point because now he has to read the situation, and that's going to take games. You know, it's going to take real games for him to read, okay, right now I need to take over the game for the next two or three minutes. Yeah. Or so-and-so, the last three guys are not hot. Lopez is not hot. KCP is not hot. Brandon. So it's time for me to get my offense going. Mm -hmm. It takes game. It takes games for him to, to, to get that experience of doing that. So I, I think he will. Magic as a great player, and you, you, we were talking, you, me, you, and Skip, we were talking about uh, off air, how you watch all the practices. As a great player, how hard is it for you to critique other players and think, well, you should be doing this or I would have done that? Is it hard for you to critique players as a great player and not be too harsh and realize everybody can't be a Magic Johnson? Great point. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, that's hard. Because <laughs> you do, you'll see five, five or ten times I'm sitting there, he's open. And, and, and they keep saying, he's not you. They can't see that, Urban. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so it is difficult to make sure that you don't put that type of pressure on somebody okay. or think he's you. Right. Um, what I have to do is sit back and say, okay, through this lens, I have to say, okay, I have to talk to that player after practice and say, hey, maybe you should have thought about this right. or thought about that. Right. And then, then let them say, man, you were right. Right. You know, so not get on them right. as much as give them some advice. Right. Uh, Brandon Ingram, when I took over last season, the last two months, he used to shy away from contact. He would go to the basket, but... Once the big man came over, he, he, he floated away from him. Right. So I grabbed him and said, man, look, you want to get a foul and an and one, go right at him and jump into his chest. Right. So now we're seeing him do that. Right. And then he's looking at me like, okay, I see what you're talking about now. Mm -hmm. So I make different points, but I sit back and let Coach Warden coach the team right. because that's his job. Right. I don't want to get into the X's and O's right. and things like that. Right. What I want to do is just say, hey, player X, maybe you should think about this or watch how he's going to play you tonight because I do know the league very, very well. Right. Like Patrick Beverly is getting ready to play mm -hmm. Lonzo. Right. He's going to be physical with him. Right. And he's going to be talking a lot of trash. <laughs> <laughs> so he has to be ready for that. Right. Mm. Obviously, Lonzo's father, LeVar, has become a star <laughs> unto himself. Yep. You've been around him. You've gotten to know him. He's going to be very interested in his son's life. Have you suggested any ground rules that this is sort of how we're going to play this game? Skip, no. 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 I've had great conversations with him, though. I like him. I do, too. Yeah. We, I, we like I, him. He's easy to like yeah, it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and you know what? He makes a lot of sense, right. too. People yeah. don't give him credit for that. Right. But he loves his boys. He loves basketball. He give him credit for it. He, he, listen. In today's world, it's hard to raise three boys, mm -hmm. right? Then guide them, okay? Guide their careers. And he's having fun with saying, hey, now people recognize me too. It's not just my boys. Right. I got some stardom too. So what I like about him, he hasn't come to one practice. He hasn't mm. said anything. He said, Urban, I'm going to hand you, Lonzo, my son to mm. you, wow. and I'm getting out the way. And he's done just that. So we have a great relationship, and I I know what he's doing. He's building a brand. There's right. nothing wrong with that. Right. Um, shoot, Kardashian, Ma, <laughs> the mother built Bit a, a uh, billion dollars. <laughs> and so, you know, he's, he's just saying, hey, I want to look out for my boys. Mm -hmm. And he's done a tremendous job. You mentioned about the guys liking Lonzo in the locker room, and you mentioned leadership. And when you traded uh, D'Angelo, you said you wanted a leader. Mm -hmm. Why are you so convinced that Lonzo is that leader that you need? Well, I think that any winning and championship team has a leader 
on the court and in the locker room. Okay. And we didn't have one. We didn't have one. So if I'm trying to get this team toward the playoffs and then the next step toward a championship, okay. we got to have leaders. I've, I've, I've always played on a team with myself, Kareem, James Worthy. We were the leaders, Coop. So you can have multiple leaders. Look at Golden State. They got multiple leaders, but the one guy they really look to is Draymond Green. Correct. See, so, so and the same thing, LeBron leads Cleveland. So we needed a leader, mm. and this young man can lead. Now, he's, he's a different leader because he's a quiet leader, so he, he does it by example. Right. He doesn't have your, your emotional charisma. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, and, but you know what? He gets mad. Does, mm. oh. oh, yeah, yeah. And he loves to compete. Mm. So he's like that, that quiet leader. He reminds me of Kareem. Mm. Kareem just said, I don't have to do no talking, mm -mm. but if you mess with me, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to let you know, right. and, but I'm going to dominate with my hook and with my play, right. and Lonzo is just like that. And Magic one one other thing about Lonzo's shot you, you brought up, have you worked with his shot? Have you left it alone? Because obviously at some point, and, and he made a bunch of three-point mm -hmm. shots mm -hmm. for UCLA, mm -hmm. it kind of comes and goes. Mm -hmm. Have you suggested any? Have mm -hmm. you, you tinkered with the mechanics mm -hmm. of it? No, let, let, let's see what happens. Okay. You know, I think that it would be wrong for me or anybody else. He's been shooting this shot for his whole life. Whole life. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's give him a season in the NBA and let's see what happens. Both not just uh, his outside shot, but his free throws as well. So I'm going to monitor both. But let him have a, the season, see what happens. No discussion yet. No discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Skip, you don't want to throw too much. You know how it right. is. You, you, you come in, you got all this hype coming. Uh, everybody's after him. Everybody wants something. So I said, I'm going to just sit back. And I told him, I, I pulled him aside. I said, look, man, I want you to know that my office is open. It don't even have to be about basketball. Right. Because I know you're going to need to get away. I had Jerry West, Bill Sharman, to just go in the office, just mm -hmm. talk. Forget basketball, just to talk. I was 20 years old when I got off the boat from right. Michigan, right? right. <laughs> so I needed somebody. And he's going to need somebody, too. He's got the greatest teacher he could ever have yeah. in his hometown. Like, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, and with that comes pressure and expectation. Yeah. Right. And so I just want him to be able to come in, kick your feet up, man. We can talk about life, mm -hmm. whatever. Anything you want to talk about, we can do that. We still, we're still wrapping our brains around Lonzo talking a lot. To yeah. begin with. But he does. You, you know what's interesting? He does. But he's, he, you just got to get to know him. He got to get to know That's you. That's what his dad said. His yeah. dad said, you don't see that side of him. Exactly. You only see this. <laughs> but he's a different guy. <laughs> no mercy. The NBA season tips off tonight with Kyrie Irving's return to Cleveland when the Cavs host the Celtics. Kyrie was sent to Boston this offseason after requesting a trade. And reports indicated he had issues playing with LeBron. Magic Johnson is still with us. <laughs> Magic, how surprised were you that Kyrie wanted out? Well, <clears throat> I was very surprised. I mean, <laughs> you won a championship together. You know, you you playing uh, alongside of you know one of the greatest has ever played, LeBron, and and they need each other. And I see this almost like uh, uh, Kobe Shaq. You know that whole thing where I tried to tell them that they needed each other. But they didn't want to listen, and then when, when one left, they looked up afterwards and said, we should have stayed together, you know. And so um, <clears throat> I think they, he probably just wanted his own team. He won that championship, and he probably just wanted to say, hey, I, wanna, I want my own team, and I want to build my personal brand. Right, because mm. now the players are into that. You That's, and I, you and I, we <laughs> we didn't know nothing about that. No, no, <laughs> it was just about winning and doing our job. Well, I don't know. You built your brand unwittingly. I mean, you just yeah. built it because you were magic. Yeah. And, you know? and, and but I, you weren't trying. No, it just no, exactly, yeah. exactly. Skip, I want to. But here's the thing: what people don't, uh, maybe some don't realize, your rookie year, Kareem was MVP of the league. You win Finals MVP. You could have said, "Hold on." Hey, I'm tired for me to shine. Kareem go steal my shine. Mm -hmm. James Worthy, there were seasons you won the MVP, and James Worthy was Finals MVP. But you guys never wanted to wanted to break it up. Mikael never said, "Okay, I won a championship. It's time for me to do my own thing." Mm -hmm. Why is it now that you see guys so willing to break up a great thing and go it alone? Well, because now it's, it, it's again social media 
the whole branding thing has come into play. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, when you look at when I when we played, mm -hmm. right, it was it's just about winning and, and and just trying to win as many championships and Super Bowls as we could win. Right. And now it, it's, it's more than that. Now, uh, hey, I, uh, Uncle Drew, uh, you know, he wants to build that brand. Right. He wants to now have his own show and have the ball in his hands all the time instead of sharing it with LeBron. And so, and then I think what I heard in an interview him say, Kyrie say, is that um, I want to show people that I could really be a point guard because people were saying, knocking yeah. him for not making right. people better. So I think he wants to prove mm -hmm. that. And so we'll see. It starts tonight. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a fan. I'm going to have the Dodgers on one. I'm going to have them on another TV. But, Magic, you enjoyed playing with the guys you played yes. with. I don't believe Kyrie ever really enjoyed playing with LeBron, and I'm not going to condemn him for that. Mm -hmm. Now, again, there's a price to pay maybe, as you say. You might look up two years, three years, and say, what was I thinking? I, right. I had it better than I thought. Right. Kyrie Irving has made us some tough stuff. He is his own little man. He's mm -hmm. not the biggest guy. Right. But he said, I want to go somewhere, and I'm not even sure he's about brand as much as, I just want to say, I'm going to do it alone here. I'm going to do it. I I'm going to be the leader and face of this team. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the driving force of this team because no matter how long he stayed with LeBron, he was still going to be second fiddle to LeBron James, who's been – you know, the best player on the planet now for what? A decade at least. Yeah, at yeah. least 10 years. And Skip, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So if that's what he wants, okay, fine. And then let's, he's, he's got to prove now to people, hey, because I moved over to Boston, I can still be a championship player and I can still do the things I want to do in terms of be the leader of the Celtics yeah. and lead them to the finals. And you got to go through Cleveland to do that. So this is going to be... One Bring hell of a season. That's yes, right. Yeah. And so, and then LeBron has to take that like, man, okay, the guy didn't want to play with me. And this is probably the first time ever this happened to right. him. Right. You know, because most guys want to play with Correct. LeBron. So he's going to take it and put a chip on his shoulders. He say, will. Okay. So I, I, I can't wait to tonight, but also during the playoffs, because that's when it becomes real. Mm -hmm. Do you think had social media been a viable option when you were playing with Kareem and and, and, and uh, James Worthy and all this and Jordan and all this, how different do you think your era would have been in the age of social media? Well, I, I, don't, I didn't want the social media part, <laughs> just the money. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a contract? Yeah, that they, oh, get? <laughs> they couldn't no. afford you. They had to give you 30% of the team, Magic. I, I think that um, you can't really compare eras like that because, you know, cell phones wasn't around. Right. We, we just love playing with each other. We love winning with each other. We, and even today, we're still all great friends. Uh, Byron Scott and I work out in the mornings, and I see him every morning, uh, James, Kareem. I think now is a different time because of the fact that it is bigger with social media, but also endorsements. And, and, and guys take it and say, you know what? I want to be popular. I want to be famous. Right. Not just good on the basketball court, I also want to be famous, and I want to be a celebrity. And so I, I, I think there's nothing wrong with what he did. I think what I, I have a problem, just he should have went to LeBron and said, I'm leaving. Mm. Remember he said, hey, I didn't talk to him. Right. So other than that, I love Kyrie. I love his game, and he can hit those big shots. Yeah, I tell you shot. what, in the fourth quarter, the man is unbelievable. Mm. And so – uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Isaiah Thomas fit Le with LeBron. Yes. Mm. And D-Wade. That's what's going to be interesting. Kyrie's going to be fine. Right. Because he's going to have the ball. Yeah, his, his game translates to right. the Celtics. He's going to be okay. How does Isaiah, without the ball? Yeah, how does that work with Isaiah, mm. LeBron, D-Wade? So uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping that Isaiah comes back 100%. That's right. going to be the key. Mm. So the odds makers in Vegas – have it dead even between LeBron and Kawhi Leonard for MVP. Odds are the same for both. Which way would you go? Who has the better shot at winning MVP? The better shot to me is going to be LeBron because he got the ball in his hand. He makes things happen so much. And they're, they're the same, though, even. Kawhi is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Because he, he just – but he does it in a quiet way. You know, he, he's playing for the Spurs. Okay. He's not getting the publicity. But when you talk about 
defending a player, the knowledge of the game, basketball IQ, offensively now he can't be stopped because he got the jump shot now. Right. And he got the step back jumper too. <laughs> and he has he, he turned over his mindset. He, he said, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to be a passer first. Now his mindset, I got to score. And, he, and he's doing it. But LeBron is special. He's always How, special. No, no, because <laughs> look. You, I think he's special. You know he's special. This well, guy. Wait a second. No. You heard what Mitch just said. He what? said that Kawhi's a little better now than LeBron. Is. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. Can, can, Magic, tell us just how special for the people. I agree, as a great player, how special is LeBron? Uh, it's just off the charts, man. You, you, listen, the man, he just has it, you know. He can take it off the board, come down, make the play for himself or his teammates. He, 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 his mindset is to win, win, and win. And that's what I love about him. He loves to compete. And as he's gotten older, he's gotten in better condition. He is a, a, a fit king like you are. <laughs> <laughs> and you too, Skip. You work out too. Yeah. That LeBron, he stays working out, stays in the gym. But what I love about him is... He always is about how do I build a team to win another championship and another championship. He never settles. He's never satisfied. And so these guys are hard to come by. Kobe, LeBron, these guys are special. You don't get to see them too many times. And so we, we got to look at him and say, we better enjoy him while he's still playing. Mm. And so, and, and I think Kawhi, after LeBron is gone, is going to be that next guy who, who can say, hey, he's special. He's going to take over the league. So, <clears throat> not trying to get you in trouble here, but what are the odds that your Lakers attract a superstar n to come to L.A. next year? Just a superstar. Not, not any. <clears throat> I'm not yeah, naming no any name. names. Yeah, no yeah. names. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think now superstars want to play for the Lakers mm. again. Uh, I think they see that we have a strategy, we have a direction, we have a vision. You got a they, young nucleus. Yeah, man. young guy. So if you if you put yourself in that lineup, and then we have a, a, a room for two guys we can sign. Oh, you, you, you threw that out there, man. You, <clears throat> woo. Come see, on, man. Come on. I see come you on. threw that come out. Come on. I got, we got yeah. two. Got we got two. room for two. two. Yes, and we can fit two guys in with that young core. We'll be right in the middle of uh, of everything, you know, everything in the West and everything in the NBA, and I, I'm happy about the direction that we're headed mm. in. And I'm I'm not suggesting anything, but LeBron does have a home in <laughs> no, Brentwood. I'm just throwing it out. But there. Le okay, you mentioned like LeBron and Kobe, and yourself, you're a great player. But can that wear on players because your drive to be great and to win, can that start to wear on other players that maybe? Not as great as you. Things don't come as easily mm -hmm. uh, uh, as it do to them as it did you. Mm -hmm. Does that start to wear on some of your teammates? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, it could because you you putting that on them. Yeah, I mean, I demand I demanded a lot. <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna lie. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, I demanded a lot. Kobe demanded a lot. LeBron demands a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, when you taste winning, you taste success. That's, that's it. That's it. That's all you want. John Elway demanded yes. a lot. You know yourself. You know you can go on. Uh, Tom Brady. Yes. I, I saw him on Sunday. <laughs> Getting in a couple of guys' yeah. faces, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and so that's the way a leader is supposed to conduct himself, right? right? And then, if you want to win, now let's let's remember something about Kyrie. He wasn't winning before LeBron came back home. Don't tell Skip that. Mm -hmm. So Skip, no. so so so, <laughs> so so he came in and taught Kyrie how to win. Yeah. Right now, Kyrie said, "Hey, I got the knowledge. It's time for me to go and teach Gordon yeah. Hayward." Mm -hmm. Teach some of the Celtics how to win. LeBron gave him the secret sauce, and now he want to go up for the restaurant. Well, now he want to go up for the restaurant. Let's not forget, Shannon. LeBron didn't know how to win before he got with Wade. That's oh, right. That's, that's right. right. You know, hey, you get you yeah. get taught. That's 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 important that we make that point. You can't even argue with me because well, Magic. Okay, okay. Great. I look at how that with Magic. <laughs> but but you know, listen, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. It's gonna be hard for somebody to beat Golden State. No mercy. Today on FS1, the Yankees look to even their series with the Astros. And tonight, the Dodgers look to take a 3-0 series lead against the Cubs. Magic Johnson Ooh. is still with us. <laughs> <laughs> How confident are you in your Dodgers winning it all? Well, you know, I feel good about our Dodgers. I think the pitching has been outstanding in the first two games, but also the three games against Arizona as well. And our relievers have been lights out. And so 
we got a little grit and grind to us now. We, we got away from that superstar thing and just really built a, a, a really strong team. And we got an excellent manager. Dave has done an mm. outstanding job. So we're excited about uh, Darvish pitching tonight. But, uh, you know, you're playing in Chicago. They got a great, great fan base. I went all, all the games last year, the three we played back there, and they're outstanding. So one game at a time. So we got to focus on the night. And we got to forget that we're up 2-0, and that's really important. So back to the NBA, we also have tonight Houston <clears throat> at Golden State. Yes. And we have a Chris Paul who's never even been to a conference final, who is now a teammate of a James Harden, who Kevin McHale said the other day has never really been a leader mm -hmm. for Houston. So they're teammates. What do you expect? How will they blend and meld? Well, that's, that's why you got Chris Paul now, yeah. so he can lead, yeah. right? And let, let – James just concentrate on scoring and doing what he does. Um, I, I think that they'll, they'll play well together, right? They have to learn how to play together, but they'll, they'll end up doing it because both of them are smart enough to say, okay, all right, you, you got it this time, I have it next time. I think that really to me, <clears throat> Golden State, number one, I think they're going to win it all again. I think OKC and San Antonio. I think, I think Houston, to me, is the fourth best team. Really? <clears throat> so you like Oklahoma City a little better than Yeah, I, th I think I like them because they have uh, they can score in different ways. Uh, they can score outside and they can take it to the rim. And you know when playoff basketball comes around, it's, it's all about foul trouble, getting to the line, mm -hmm. creating mm -hmm. fouls. I think OKC will be able to do that a, a, a lot better. I th and then San Antonio, San Antonio. Uh, Popovich, the best coach in basketball. Kawhi Leonard is is top two or three players in the league. But then they have size and so and knowledge. One thing about San Antonio, they really play within themselves. They don't get outside their scheme and what they do. So it's tough to beat them in a playoff series. What about Minnesota? Carl Anthony Towns, Jimmy mm -hmm. Butler, Teague, Wiggins. Young, young team. And exciting. I think they're going to uh, make some noise. Um, now we just got to figure out, can they hit enough shots outside? Mm -hmm. Right. Because all those other teams can shoot outside. Right. Right. And if they can hit enough shots outside on the, on the perimeter, they're going to have to be dealt with. I think they have the talent. Right. And then Jimmy uh, Butler's tough, mean, so they brought some toughness in. Uh, that'll probably take a lot of pressure off of Wiggins. Mm -hmm. um, but I still think that uh, there'll be five, six in that range. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I still like the other teams. Mm -hmm. So better. back to the Thunder. Can Russell Westbrook, coming off averaging a triple-double, MVP year, can he sacrifice some of that shine to incorporate <clears throat> those other two superstar players into his world? I, I think Russ... Westbrook will do that. I think when you, because I think he, he, he looked up and said, man, did you see when Golden State blasted them every single game? They beat them by over 20 points mm -hmm. every single game yeah. last year. So he knows he needed talent. He needed help. So when you trade for Paul and then here you trade for Carmelo, you understood. And, and they probably ran it by him too. Hey, we got a chance to get Paul George. We got a chance to get Carmelo. Right. You good with it? He probably signed off. And now they got their big three to go up against everybody else's big three. Sam Presti did a pretty good <clears throat> yeah, job. Yeah, oh, he's, he's outstanding. He's, he's, he's one of the best in the yeah, league. Yeah. He's one of the best in the league. So now they have their big guns, their big three. Where, what bothers me about them is their bench. No depth. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna end up hurting them against a, a team like Golden State. Because Golden State can go all the way 10, 12 deep. And he, the, Steve Curry don't have a problem of putting anybody in at any time. Mm. And, um, but I like the fact that Carmelo has something to prove. And he's really going to try to use this to say, hey, everybody in New York and around the league, I could win on a good team. Right. So this is going to be uh, fun to watch them play together, all three of them. But it's going to be a great year for the NBA. This is, great. This is going to be one of the best years. I'm so excited. I don't know what to do just for my Lakers, but also for the league as well. You say it's going to be one of the best NBA seasons, even though the Warriors are such prohibited favorites? It, it, it doesn't matter. 
it doesn't matter because you now have teams that you're going to watch because you feel they got a, 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 a chance, okay. right? Where before you knew, oh, it's over. Go and take them in. <laughs> now, OKC, I'm looking at them saying, man, they got a shot. You're looking at Houston. You're looking at San Antonio, you know, Minnesota, on and on and on. So these teams have gotten better. Right. And so it's great. And then on the East, <laughs> because of that trade, <laughs> you know, cool, I'm going to be watching tonight to see what happens. And Boston is, is good now. And it's good for the league when the Celtics are good. Right. And we want the Knicks to come back as well. We do. Well, can I, I just want to, have you ever seen, and Skip, when we go back and forth, I've never seen a conference this deep. They, I mean, the Western <clears throat> Conference. Yeah. What they, I mean, every, every great player with the exception of LeBron James and, and Kyrie went to the West. Yeah. That was already stacked. Magic, have you ever seen anything like this? No, and and what's going to happen, Shannon, is some good teams are going to be left out. Right. <laughs> of the playoffs. You're talking about only eight can make it. Correct. And so you're going to look up and say the ninth team, the tenth team was pretty good. Right. And so uh, it's it, – it, but it's good for the fans. Yeah. And I think that that's – Basketball junkies like myself, we're excited because it's good for the fans because every night you're going to look up, you're going to get to see a really good, either great team or a great player. Yeah, they're running from Braun. They want to leave. The East. They, want to be, they want a chance to play in the finals. You know, if you're not on Cleveland, you're not going to the finals. In the Please, East. only one man did not run. Kyrie Irving said, "I'm staying here. We'll deal I with want him. to go head to head. We'll I, deal I with want him. him. That's gonna yeah. be fun. Well, That's gonna be fun. Tonight. And we haven't even talked about Toronto, you know. And so it's gonna be fun. Those three teams are the top. In what about the Miami? I mean, Joy. I, I love Miami. Miami. I'm gonna tell you something. As far as one through twelve, toughness. Miami is the toughest team. I'm talking about physical, mean, yeah. tough. Yep. Yeah. They're going to play their game, and they're going to make the playoffs this year. But they does go. does it concern you, the disparity of the strength in the West? I've never seen the West, to your point, deeper, because we can go down to Denver and Portland. And right. Sacramento. Right. Was, they're way better than they were. Yeah. And then I look at the East, and clearly Cleveland's the favorite, and then it's Boston and Miami, and then it Toronto. just sort of tails yeah. off yeah. into it, – it's. There's a, it's lopsided between the conferences. Does that yeah. bother you as an executive, as a, as a driving force of the NBA? No, no, I, I, because again, I want basketball to be good, and we're gonna have outstanding basketball games. Look, we haven't even talked about Denver. Denver is a young team on the rise right Ooh. now. They, Jokic, they, they are <laughs> amazing. They can shoot the lights out. Yes, and so, you know. What I want is make sure that it's good competitive basketball. Mm -hmm. And on a nightly basis, whether I'm at the games or league pass, I'm watching, <laughs> I can just enjoy good basketball. Now, do I want it to continue? I hope that, you know, stars stay. You know, you want to Or come have... to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come to L.A. first. Then. <laughs> Hey, I can say that, Shannon, without getting in trouble. Okay. Stars, please come to L.A. <laughs> I can't mention no name, but please come. <laughs> but, but I love it. I love it because it's going to be a great year for the NBA. It's, it's already been the greatest offseason we've has. ever had. Yes. Yeah. We've ever had. And so it's exciting. No mercy. The Warriors open their season tonight against the Rockets. Westgate has the Warriors as overwhelming favorites to repeat as champions. They are followed by the Cavs and the Celtics. Shannon, who will make the finals and who will win the finals? Can't wait for this. Well, look. Come on, do it. Do what? Have the courage of your convictions. I want to hear it. What? I mean. Best player on the planet. Not one, is? not two, not three, but four. How many you're going to lose in a row? You're going oh. to see, see this, not the trilogy, whatever this is called, a four-peat. This is what you're going to see. You're going to see the Warriors come out of the West. You're going to see the Cavaliers come out of the East. But this is not the Cavaliers team tonight that you're going to actually see in the I, final. I, I would hope not, yeah. No, 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 no. Because I believe that now that Tristan comes off the bench, we're more, they're more apt to move him. So we might be willing to Tristan. You want Tristan in that first pick oh, that, really? Bro that Brooklyn granted us? Give us Boogie Cousins. So now, you, you're you're suggesting they're going to trade for Boogie before this year is over? Oh yeah, we getting Boogie. Ugh. Oh yeah, we getting Boogie, and we, what? the land, will celebrate again. Wow. Yes. 
Yes, it's going to happen. I foretold of things to come. Great riches will come to the land of, of the uh -huh. wine and gold. The huh. land again will be kings. You remember that song, Skip, when we were kings? Oh, I thought you were quoting the Bible. No, I wasn't quoting <laughs> quote no Bible. You remember that song, When We Were Kings? Yeah. They were talking, the Ali, the Ali movie, mm -hmm. they're talking about that's the king. Yeah. That's the king they're yeah. talking about. And the riches is the Larry O'Brien trophy huh. that's coming back to the land until it's rightful. Who's lurking over the king's shoulder? You see where he is? Yeah. In the back. Oh, he's in the back. <laughs> in the back. <laughs> Satchel Page said, don't worry about it. Don't look behind you. Mm. He might be gaining on it. That's right. We're ahead. Yeah. We're in the front. He looks like he's lurking, though. You, you he's know, got a little grin on his face, like, here he comes. LeBron, like, I ain't, LeBron, I ain't even worried about you. Mm. The kid. Because guess what? Objects do not appear closer than they are. Mm. So really? he way in the back. Oh, I think they do appear no, closer. Than no, no. That's not what my truck said. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, well, well, so this is it. So Boogie Cousins is going to be the MVP of the finals. No. Okay. I, just, I don't. All I'm, I'm just saying is keep up with this. No, I got Golden State and the Cavaliers. Yes. But I believe the Cavaliers will move one move Trist because nobody is coming to see Tristan Thompson get eight nine rebounds a game. You get Boogie Cousins because you know. Look, I'm not telling you what we're going to do. We so, might stay, we might leave. Wait, but New Orleans is going to take Tristan straight up for Boogie Cousins? No, we're going to give you the first pick that Brooklyn's going to oh, give us. Oh, with the pick. Yes. Well, okay. Yes. I think because New Orleans is pretty happy with what they got. They, Go they're happy right now, but are you going to be happy paying Boogie Cousins one, $180 million when you're the 10th seed again? Mm. What are you paying for? Mm. Now, you want to make us really happy, we might give you Tristan, the first pick, anybody other than LeBron for Anthony Davis. Because hmm. at some point in time, I know Anthony Davis loves New Orleans and he wants to be a part of the resurgence that get the Pelicans back into the playoffs and make a deep run, but it's not going to happen hmm. unless they get another guy. So, so we're about to take Boogie. I'm, I'm hearing a man who has very little confidence in the Cavaliers as they're constituted no, right now, no. right? I do I believe the way they are constructed currently? Can they get out of the East? Absolutely. But I believe they need another bona fide superstar if oh. they're to dethrone the Warriors. So if they don't add anybody, you're picking Golden State. No, I'm not. Cleveland. I'm picking the Cavaliers because they're going to add somebody. I know things you don't know. Those well, that know won't is tell. Is there a caveat here? Is there, so, so you're going to back out if if they don't make a blockbuster megastar trade? The Warriors and the Cavaliers will play in the NBA Finals in 2018. The Cavaliers will win. I believe the Cavaliers will win because they're going to make a trade that's going to really put them over the hump. Now, what part about that didn't you understand? And so the win or over the hump? Is LeBron going to stay long-term then? Because he's got... Why are you worried about us? There you go, Skip. Cut? No, that's not the question. <laughs> now, I'm not telling you what this man told me in confidentiality. Oh. I told you, my grandfather... So are said, you breaking news here? My grandfather you said, You got a boy, good source, like the source? Two people yeah. can keep a secret, but one of them mm. need to be dead in order mm. for that to happen. Uh -oh. So LeBron took... I don't want LeBron to send for me. See, he told me something in confidentiality, Skip. Now... Were well, you just divulged? No, I didn't say whether or not he's staying or going. Mm. I'm just saying that we're going to make a move. That's what we do. Make a move as in trade or as just in like move, move, out, move of out of Cleveland? Trade, Skip. Trade? So, well, so what if they don't make a trade? What if it doesn't work? Are you still picking Cleveland over Golden State? If I tell you grass would See, turn See, you've got a cheese. back door that you can no. exit here. That's if what I, I don't like about I it. I want you to listen to me. If I tell you grass would turn to cheese, you walk into Shank's office and says, I'm retired, I'm going to start hustling crackers. When I tell you something, you mark it down. This is going to happen. Really? Yeah. I don't, I don't get the grass cheese thing, but it's okay. If all grass will turn to cheese, all, think about all are the grass in California. Are you predicting that's going to happen also? If I tell you to do, you better start hustling <laughs> crackers. Really? Joy, okay. what you going to do, Joy? You load up on the rest? I don't, I don't put the, I just eat cheese plants. What about Triscuits? You eat yeah. those? It's like slices. Cheez-Its, you eat Cheez-Its. No, no. I would so I Shannon Sharp like says, I, if I can, my final takeaway here is that Golden State's a lock to win the West. No, right? yes, 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 yes. That's, yes, that's one side yes. of the equation. And I the Cavaliers heard. are a lock to win the East. Yes, yes, you got two locks. Okay, got it. <laughs> but 
without the trade. I, I don't know. No, I there's a, skip, see, there you go. There's a big condition. Why are you, why you trying to parse my words? Because you got a backdoor exit. No, I don't. You got an I'm not escape like you. route. I'm not like escape you. Escape route. I don't ever have an escape route. Oh, uh, I don't need, in, if I, we trade for so-and-so. I don't know if you noticed know lately. Yeah. Have you seen Westgate, who's the MVP favorite in football? Oh, in football? Yeah. Who is it? He plays in Philly. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, so we, oh, we should we should do no, that. No, topic. no, no, we're not doing Let's that. Let's trade out yeah. the next topic. No, no, I'm no, good. no, no, I'm no, good. No, no, no. <laughs> do you, you want a better case of do on no, it right skip. now? I'll bet you a case skip. of do right here, right I, now no. that he Carson Wentz doesn't skip. win the MVP. I, why bet? you? I don't set the books at Westgate or Bodega. Okay. I mean, all I'm saying, I thought you knew that. I didn't. <laughs> The look on your face, Kip, when I said that, the MVP, he going to win no, it, I, Well, they're the best team right now. Nah, he don't want to hear that. He said he don't want to hear nothing. Okay. See, he got seven touchdowns. Who has the last... better QBR between Dak and Wentz right now? Help me out. But I was looking for Dak. I was like, okay, MVP favorites. I was looking for Dak, and I didn't see him up there. Well, they're two and three. Well, the, the runaway favorite well, right you, now I, is Tom Brady. I, this I, is I, over. No, actually, Wentz is number one. I know, but he's just going to run away with it, Tom Brady. Wentz. Oh, oh, please. Skip, can we talk about this? Yeah. Who you got? That's your fault. You oh, brought it up. I just had to rub it. I just finish had to it. <laughs> so you you are saying Golden State's the lock in the West, and I'm saying baloney to that. I'm saying, speaking of the New England Patriots, the New England Patriots were the most prohibitively favored NFL team I have ever, ever, ever seen in all my career yes. covering the National Football yes. League. And what happened? Life happened. Yeah. Stuff happened. Yes. They are humans because they are human. Yeah. Things go south. Julian Edelman got hurt. I don't wish it. Are you doing this with a caveat? Are you trying to back no door? No caveat here. I'm just saying Golden State, something will go wrong with Golden State. And before I finish on the West, I'm going to go back over to the East. I was poised to pick Boston because of Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward to an extent. But then Dwayne Wade happened. I didn't see him going back and reuniting with LeBron James, and he's one man I've said from the start of my career on national TV I do not bet against. I don't bet against Dwayne Wade, and I think he will assume some of the closer role that Kyrie so ably filled for LeBron so James. So LeBron. Yeah. Oh, please. So, again, that put them over the top, and they don't need Boogie Cousins or whoever you're talking about. Anthony Davis, they're good enough to win the East with Dwayne Wade. I'm not talk we're not talking about – yes, we, we, we agree on that. Okay. So, now, back to the West. I am going Spurs over Golden State in the West. And the only reason I did not pick my Spurs last year was because I wasn't sure – who, if anybody, could fill the Tim Duncan leadership void. And I wasn't sure that Kawhi Leonard could come out of his offensive shell enough to fill a void that was left by LaMarcus Aldridge, who they tried to make it LaMarcus's team the year before. Right. It was a disaster in the postseason because of that. They extended LaMarcus yesterday, and I'm good with that, as long as he's just a cog, because he's better on the defensive end than the offensive end. I thought end. they tried to move him this summer, though. Yeah, they have, and they might still try to move him. I mean, well, dang. But you know what? It's hard to, it's hard to fill the shoes of a six foot eleven guy who can rim protect like yeah. that. So my point is, by the end of the year last year, it was flat out Kawhi Leonard's team. And lots of coaches and lots of experts were pro proclaiming him the best two-way player in all of basketball, which was a very subtle and sort of a safe way to say he's better than LeBron James. Yeah. Because they Cam didn't want to actually say he's better than LeBron, but that just did it. Yeah. And Cam Michael and Jordan closed that deal by saying he's just better. Kawhi Leonard. Whatever, because he, he, he's Jordan Brandon. Jordan. Skip, you, yeah. I, I love how you just throw, you just toss that aside yep. that the guy's an endorser for Jordan, Brand Jordan. I, well, I'm not going to toss that. Well, tell the people right. that. At home. All right, you, you just told them. So the point is, by the, the start of the playoffs last year, Kawhi Leonard was the best player in basketball, and he no. proved it through the first two rounds, and the Spurs caught fire at the end of the Houston series. And everybody wants to just make this go away. They don't want to acknowledge the fact that Kawhi Leonard, through two and a half quarters, had scored 26 points with eight rebounds in game one at Oakland of the Western Conference Finals, and they led the Spurs by 23 points. If Zaza Pacheep shot does not happen, the Spurs are going to win game one, and they're going to win that series because no, they won not. opening night by 29 at Golden State. They love to play in at San Golden Antonio, State. And San Antonio, had, before the end of the season, had went to San Antonio mm -hmm. minus Kevin Golden Durant. State. 
and was yep. down 22 yep. in the first and end up winning by double digits. They did. Okay. And, and yet, when the money was on the table, what happened? Kawhi happened. He was playing at the highest level. He had the number one PER in all of basketball through the first two rounds and the first game of the, the Western Conference Finals. Best PER. He's going to win the MVP this year. Not, he's no. going to carry this team if he's healthy, and I'm still not See, sure that, no, he's No, we don't healthy. do no caveats. Well, I, I don't know because he missed the whole preseason, and he's not going to play Wednesday so, night. So what you want he's me to do about that? He's got a tendon issue well, okay. in his quad. Okay. So, so I don't know. If he's healthy – Th that's all I know. If he can't play, well, then obviously I'm but, out. But, but you, I think he's going to be okay. But you ought to condemn me for all these caveats if Kawhi does this, if this happens. Well, your caveat is way out there. If you're going to add one of the best big men in basketball, maybe the best big man? Well, really? What did Golden State do? Oh, what well, did, hold on. What did hey, Golden State well, do? Well, then, if, if San Antonio trades for LeBron, I think we're going to win it all. How about that? <laughs> no. Is that my no, caveat? No, do we, I get that no, one? No, 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 no. Hold on. No. It, it's, uh, you know what? We might want number two. Because mm. when we move, we go somewhere, we take a different number. So we mm. might want number two, Kawhi. Mm. You going to get that number two up? Mm. Of course you would. Mm -mm. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Uh-oh, yes, he LeBron would. LeBron now? Yeah! LeBron now. The LeBron aging LeBron? LeBron tomorrow, oh. two weeks from tomorrow, or What's two years. What's he got left? Two years? No, he got like four or five. How many he want? Four or five. How many he want? As many 11, as Brady has left? Eleven mm. times. Well, you seen Brady the last couple of weeks. Yeah, you have. tell me, tell me he's playing until he's 45. 45. That's what he's going to play to. LeBron might make it to 36, 37. I mean, LeBron just been playing the NBA since he's seven. No mercy. Yesterday, Mike McCarthy said Aaron Rodgers will have surgery on his broken collarbone and added that he could miss the rest of the season. Rodgers was injured in the first quarter Sunday on this hit from Vikings linebacker Anthony Barr. McCarthy took issue with Barr's hit. Let's take a listen. I didn't like the hit. I had a chance to watch it last night on the, on the plane. Um, he's out of the pocket. He's clearly expecting to get hit. Um, but to, to, to pin him to the ground like that, you know, I felt it was an illegal act. And to, to sit here and, and lose, you know, lose any of your players on something like that, yeah, it doesn't feel very good. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't like the hit. So it's unnecessary, legal, wherever, wherever you want to put it at. But I, it was totally unnecessary, in my opinion. We're joined by Fox NFL analyst Greg Jennings. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Welcome. Joy. Does Mike McCarthy have a point? Of course he has a point. He's on the bad side of this. <laughs> it was his player that got hurt. His star player in Aaron Rodgers, the face of the NFL, if you ask me and several other people across the, who watch this game. The, the point, however, it's, it's irrelevant. Um, and, and the reason why I say this is because there was, there's nothing that can change with him having the point. And if he was on the other side, which you take Mike Zimmer, who his player was the one, Anthony Barr, who imposed the hit. He's going to say it was above board, as he did. Every head coach, every coach has been in this situation where your player has been the one accused of being dirty or your player has been on the end of an injury of a potential flag-worthy hit. Mm -hmm. That's all Mike McCarthy is doing. He's, he's making sure he defends his player in saying, yes, absolutely it was unnecessary. Now, if you watch the reason why he has a point is because when we watched the game last night and we watched the 53-yard touchdown pass that Marcus Mariota threw to Taiwan Taylor, mm -hmm. Jonathan Hawkins got flagged for a late hit or roughing the passer that happened almost right after he hit, he threw the ball, released the ball. Aaron Rodgers got hit about a second and a half. It was a little later. So it could have been flagged. It wasn't. However, I don't think, it, again, we talked about it being dirty or not. I don't think it was dirty or maliciously intended. And I don't really believe that he pinned him to the ground. He form tackled and, and just laid on him. I mean, that's what you do when you tackle a guy. And it's unfortunate that Aaron Rodgers got hurt. But, yes, Mike has a point to say this was unnecessary because it's his player on the wrong side of it. Had it been Clay Matthews or Nick Perry – imposing a hit on Case Keenum, he would say, my, my players, come on, nobody wants to see a guy get hurt. That's what no, we teach. That's what we teach. It, it's, it's unfortunate that it happened. 
and move on. But he's on the he's on the bad end of this on this side. So it, of course you have to say that. Like I said, every coach has been in this situation. Every coach will side with their player. He's speaking out of frustration. He's frustrated that he just saw his season end when Aaron Rodgers collarbone. He said, this is what Mike McCarthy said. He said, Rodgers was out of the pocket expecting to get hit. He got hit. He just happened to get injured on the hit. That's what happened. Out of the pocket. Rodgers was out of the pocket expecting mm -hmm. to get hit. He got hit. He got injured. It happened. Now, if the same play happens and Rodgers doesn't break his collarbone, we're not even having this discussion. Absolutely. I don't believe in having a discussion because of the injury. Either it was a dirty play or it wasn't dirty. See, I don't look at the end result to determine if a play was dirty or not. No. It was a legal play. You're taught, make the quarterback feel us. Make him pick himself up off the ground. Make him pick himself up up under you off the ground as many times as we possibly can. Every team, for the most part, is a snake. The most important part of the snake is the head because that's the only part that can do you harm. So guess what, Skip? Figuratively speaking, I'm trying to remove that. That's what they did. It's unfortunate that it happened to a face of a franchise, to a face of the NFL. But this is what happened in the collision sport where big men tackle other big men. Mm. Things break. Things tear. And it's unfortunate, but it happened. But there's nothing dirty about this play. Unfortunately, you both keep missing <laughs> the point. The point is it's a legal hit that should be outlawed to protect by far the most valuable player on the football field. And in this case, one of the two faces of the NFL, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Thank Absolutely. you very much. So, Mike McCarthy said, to pin him to the ground like that, I felt was an illegal act. Well, you felt it was, but it's legal to pin him to the ground like that. And then the Pro Bowl, the former Pro Bowl linebacker in his 11th season, Ahmad Brooks said, he didn't have to drive him into the ground. No, he really didn't have to. And then Jari Evans, who's a six-time Pro Bowler, a guard for the Packers now, said he could have pulled up, but he wanted to send a message, to your point, because all of a sudden you get a free shot at the head of the snake. He's not just the head of the snake. He's the head of the whole NFL, at least of the mm -hmm. NFC mm -hmm. side. Yep. <laughs> and you, you've got him. In, in the most defenseless, vulnerable position mm -hmm. you can get him in because he's on one foot looking downfield. The ball is gone. He's a little off balance, so he can't protect himself. He can't sort of duck and cover and with, withstand the blow. Nope. He is completely at your mercy. He is a sitting duck. He is, he is as vulnerable as you can be. And you, if you are allowed to, and I don't blame Anthony Barr because he's taught to finish this play out. Right. You can even bounce on his shoulder. And, and he aimed his bounce perfectly to the right shoulder, and he came down full force, six foot five inches, 255 pounds on the throwing shoulder of a man who's about 6'2. I think he's lost some weight this year. He looks like 215 ish, Aaron Rodgers. And crack, gone for the yeah. year. You got the right one. You even pinpointed the right collarbone and broke his throwing shoulder collarbone, and he is done. And the only silver lining here is that the competition committee will have to address this this offseason, just the way in 2008, after that season, it had to address what became known as the Brady Rule because Bernard Hopkins, I mean Bernard Pollard, Hopkins, Pollard lot, yeah. um, came in late on Tom Brady with his left leg planted, ball gone, and bam, ACL. Gone, gone for the year. So they said... What would they call it? Like the one-step rule. Mm -hmm. you, you can't. You, well, can't, you can't. You, you, you can't get up and then leap what, into the yes. quarterback. Even if you go to the yeah. ground, you have yeah. to make an effort to get up. Get you up. can't hit the quarterback in yes. his knee or ankle area Correct. from the ground. So this is the antithesis. This is the opposite of that. I don't care if the quarterback is in or out of the pocket. I've said this for 20 years. I'm not being 2020 hindsight about this. I'm not being a hypocrite. I've said it's so unfair to allow especially a defensive lineman or a linebacker, bigger players than the quarterback, mm -hmm. to, 
to continue through the tackle where you drive them backward and a lot of times their head whiplashes on the turf. turf. You get that one yeah. so you can get a concussion. And most of the time, the most common injury a quarterback suffers is when they get it's the Tony Romo injury. One of the clavicles is going to crack because or, they are or shoulder. They're kind Sorry. of a little. They're, they're kind of a yeah, small cause, bone. Because they don't. They don't. They don't work their shoulders. No. They don't work their upper bodies like a yeah. quarterback. You want. I mean, like a normal uh, a football player, because you want to be fluid in your throwing motion. So you don't need yeah. chest and straps and all that. You want to be able to fluid throw the football. But here's the thing, Skip. The guy is protected in the pocket, and the only thing is, is that Aaron was rolling to his right, so when he throws the ball, he's going to be on his right. If he's rolling to his left, it would have been his left shoulder that got pinned. But as a defender, you're taught to secure the quarterback. You grab him, and you no, boom. You, you know, it's just like yeah. when you pull up on a punt block. Yeah. If the ball is gone off the punter's foot, you, you, you know you can you, – you just got to pull up because if you – just touch him a little bit. It's going to be five yards. See, I think you could pull up. No, I, I think that he, he did pull here's, up. Here's the he thing: <clears throat> in, in, in this league, in our league, there's different rules of engagement that apply when you're talking about the quarterback position. You talk, you alluded to the Tom Brady changing of that rule. In, in football, you are taught to. I don't care how you get him down, get him down. Whether you're on the ground and you can, you still have a chance to grab him, get him down. The quarterbacks in this league promote rule changes because they are the face of the league. They are typically the face of franchises. They are the most, whether I like to say it, whether anybody on that football field agrees or disagrees, the reality is that they are the most important position on the field at all times. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, the referees, the league has to protect their greatest asset, which is the quarterback position. And so to that, Mike McCarthy has a point to say, yes, yeah. it was unnecessary. Brooks, Jar Jerry oh, Evans, they all – if I'm – if Aaron Rodgers is my quarterback, oh, I'm devastated. saying – absolutely, I'm yeah. saying the same thing. Yeah. But if, Le if, 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 if Barr is my teammate – I'm, I'm defending him. him. Absolutely. If, if, if this if was... As your teammate, you're thinking he's a cheap shit. No, no, I'm thinking no. <laughs> but, but at the same time, even to that point, mm -hmm. we all know that regardless if we agree with it or disagree with it, whichever side we're on, we, we, we question, like, well, they, I mean, they could have thrown a flag. It definitely, it definitely was flag-worthy. Mm -mm. Pending the rules that are in place of roughing the pass, it was definitely flag-worthy. Skip. No. If a flag had been thrown, would it have changed your mind? I don't know. I think it would have. Greg, thanks for joining us. Happy. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. We're back at the same time tomorrow morning, 9.30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. one.